good afternoon, everyone. Before I introduce the eminent uh, panelists, um, I wanted to introduce this session, um, which is titled Moving the Needle on FLN from Commitment to Change. And I think it's, uh, I don't know if it was intentional or it was pertinent that they uh, titled it Moving the Needle from Commitment to Change. When I looked at this title, I did a little bit of research and I said, let me go back to 2005. And that is the year that ASAR did its first uh, India-wide rural survey. And I'll just quote the numbers of ASAR, just for everyone's memory. 72% of students in grade 3 cannot read a grade 2 text. 53% of grade 3 students cannot do subtraction. This is what ASAR 2005 told us. Fast forward uh, 20, 15, 18 years later, I'm quoting the ASAR 2018 number. 73% of students in grade 3 in schools in rural India cannot read a grade 2 text. 80% of students in grade 3 in schools in rural India cannot do subtraction. The needle has not moved. And I think we're here because we're recognizing now, and NEP most importantly has recognized the importance of Nippon. Foundational literacy and numeracy is critical. The Honorable Prime Minister, if you recall, about two years ago said that if foundational literacy and numeracy is achieved, the rest of NEP will be successful. To the contrary, if it is not, NEP will not be achieved. I want to read out a, a report that was actually um, published in 2022 by the Institute of Competitive, Competitiveness Study. It's very important to understand the importance of FLN, which is why I'm just going to take a 30 seconds to read this out. Basic reading, writing, and performing arithmetic provide a foundation for higher order thinking because metacognitive abilities help the learner to reflect and evaluate problems, form logical arguments, and understand different perspectives. When children learn to write and read, they acquire phonological awareness about letters, syntactic knowledge, and wisdom about words, and learn to express their thoughts. The learner needs intuitive, and explicit guidance from teachers, parents, and peers to foster comprehension. And this skill further helps in understanding the meaning of a text. Hence, without foundational education, children will not obtain the human capital they need to enhance their careers, become engaged citizens, and contribute to the growth of the economy after they leave school. I think hopefully this tells you the importance of being able to read, write, speak with comprehension and do basic arithmetic, because it has an impact on life, it has an impact on the economy. But the World Bank Assessment Report said that 50% of children lack FLN basic skills by grade five. Due to the pandemic, I think it's important to quote this number because it's real, 92% of students lost at least one specific language ability, and 82% lost at least one specific mathematic ability as per UNICEF's report in 2022. Fortunately, as a result of this, or I should f give you one more number, between 2019 and 2022 in low and middle income countries, the share of children aged 10 years who cannot read, write, and understand simple texts went from 57% to 70%. So this is not just an India problem, it's a worldwide issue. Recognizing this, Nippon Bharat launched in 2021, as you all know, where the goal is by 2026, 27, grade three children should be Nippon in literacy and numeracy skills. Fortunately, we've had the National Achievement Survey since 2001, which has given us enough data. We've also had the foundational learning study that was conducted in 2022, which has given us a good baseline to begin with at a fairly detailed micro level within states. Today, we're gonna to talk to eminent panelists sitting here from various states. I also wanted to quote that the state of Tamil Nadu launched Enno Medutum two years ago, which is their national mission on FLN. The state of um, Uttar Pradesh launched Mission Prerna. Uh, the state of Tripura launched Nippon Tripura. State of Assam launched Nippon Aksom. So it's not to say that the missions aren't live and running. I think today is a great day for us to sit and discuss this with three very eminent panelists from our, our state headquarters and one of our panelists from uh, a sub, who I would consider a subject matter expert in the field. So with, without further ado, 
let me introduce Ms. Karuna Vakati, who is a 2004 batch IS officer, currently serving as secretary in the Department of School Education, Government of Telangana. Welcome, ma'am. Dr. Anshad Singh, who is a 2008 batch IS officer, serving in the Haryana cadre. Currently, he holds the position of Director of Secondary Education and State Project Director for Haryana School Shiksha Pariyojana Parishad. Welcome, sir. Mr. Lokesh Jangir, who is a 2014 batch IS officer and serves as Additional Mission Director in Raja Shiksha Kendra, Madhya Pradesh. Welcome, sir. And Mr. Saurav Banerjee, who is the country head of Room to Read India. Room to Read works in several states, including Chhattisgarh, Uttarakhand, Rajasthan, Karnataka, Telangana, on their FLN missions. Welcome, Saurav. If I can start off the session by requesting um, Karuna, ma'am, and then uh, the, the rest of the panelists to give their opening marks, uh, hopefully just two minutes each, and then we'll get into a conversation after that. Ma'am, over to you. Yeah. So uh, good evening, and uh, uh, thankful that uh, you've made me a part of this session. Uh, your opening remarks are insightful. I just thought, uh, just to set the context, I have come from the health department. I'm relatively new to the education. You know, I used to think that emergencies are in hospitals, you know. But when I go into schools and look at the NAS across the country and in Telangana, I think that uh, this is an emergency. So anything that we speak and transact in any of these meetings, I think that uh, it is not a normal time that a child goes through school year after year and the learning outcomes are very far below what they should be. So I think that any decisions and uh, that we take should be in the context of an emergency which is uh, unstated, uh, but very much there. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Anshad Singh, your opening remarks, sir. Way uh, back in uh, 21, May 21, I joined the department as director of elementary education. And uh, since joining of the service, I, uh, I has uh, believed that uh, Government should prioritize the education, means government should uh, m give more focus to the education sector. Because uh, in the government schools, around 50% of the citizen across the uh, nation or the state are in government schools. And uh, it, it, uh, it is the real fact that quality of education being imparted in the government school is uh, just below average what has to be uh, what it, it has to be and uh, the basic for becoming india a developed uh, nation the basic uh, apart from the capital financial capital hum human resource capital is also very much important i think it is more important than the financial capital requirement that's why uh, government must invest in the hu development of human resource capital and uh, the basic foundation starts from the school and the uh, and that too in school the primary education and elementary education well, after that uh, uh, the students or children must di digress to their uh, based on their competencies their skills uh, their aptitude but for uh, fln must be there that's why we started uh, the mission in a real mission mode from the uh, point of starting teacher training and uh, Haryana has the ba base means uh, plus point of having three foundation working on uh, with the state government like LLF, CSF and Sampark Foundation plus other uh, ground uh, works has also been uh, there that's why we were uh, uh, able to start early. Thank you, sir. Lokesh, sir? So I think the details we'll touch upon uh, during the panel discussion, but a couple of issues that I'd like to briefly flag off before we get into the details. So the importance of FL, we all know. It's just that the NEP or the Nipun has just reiterated it. But there are a couple of structural issues that we need to address first. A would be the ECC part. So everybody including all the state governments and the government of India. So we have uh, been like emphasizing in grade one and two. 
So how do we go about the, all the states, they have prepared their TLMs for grade one and two. They have been uh, training the uh, primary school teachers. So the CPD is going on. But what about the three years of pre-schooling, which the NEP is talking about? So there's hardly any state uh, in the country which has the three years of pre-schooling in the government setup. There are a few states, uh, say Maharashtra and Gujarat, which have a year of preschooling in the form of Balwadi. But when we uh, compare it with the so-called public schools, the private schools, so, uh, you know, there is a vast deal of difference. When a children, uh, when the children come up with three years of preschooling, and vis-a-vis -vis somebody who is just uh, right into grade one. So the Vidya Pravesh or any, for that matter, the 12 weeks of school readiness program, that cannot substitute the three years preschooling. So that is one which the uh, governments have to grapple with. And of course, there is the issue of inter-ministerial coordination which is involved. So presently, the Ministry of WCT looks after the uh, pupils from three to six, and thereafter the school education takes over. So that transition has to be seamless from preschool to class one. So I think this will be a critical issue which we need to address when we talk about achieving the FLM goals. Secondly, uh, although not as important as this, but if you look at structurally, so NEP or the Nipun mission, it, Nipun talks about achieving these LOs at the end of grade three. Whereas the structure of the NEP, the foundational stage, it is still grade two. So the three years of preschooling plus grade one and two. So there is that uh, divergence in the two. So somewhere down the line, we also have to uh, ensure that it's in consonance with the uh, the NEP stages. So I would start with that. Thank you, Lokesh, sir. Saurav? Yeah. Uh, so I think you started off in a, with some the statistics you said in the beginning were quite, uh, you know, taking a back in a sense that from 2005 to 2018, the needle has not moved. So uh, that's fact, and that's we are all struggling with. Um, I think what makes us hopeful um, are a couple of things. One, uh, 2010, I think, is when the large funders, the global funders and influencers of education left. At a policy level, there's a there's a you know acknowledgement of the importance of foundation literacy. I think that's a hopeful thing. The other thing that's happened is over the last 10, 12, 15 years almost, I would say, there's been a lot of research on the pedagogical aspects of how children learn to need literacy and numeracy better. And there's been a lot of uh, you know research, new knowledge that has come up including linkages to neurocognitive sciences and a whole lot of uh, uh, efforts on that side. So I think at this point, uh, what makes me hopeful is there's an enabling policy environment, there's an, there's an uh, increase in the knowledge base of how to do things better. And I think that gives us a hope that probably the needle would now move in that direction. Thank you. Thanks, Saurav. Thank you, everyone, for your opening remarks. <clears throat> Just to quickly summarize, <clears throat> Karuna Ma'am said it's an emergency. Uh, Dr. Anshad Singh said that human capital uh, is critical, and building human capital is critical for our country. Lokesh sir spoke about the structural issues, and Saurav spoke about the pedagogical aspects. I'm glad you've addressed all of these and laid them on the table, because that's what we'll spend the next 40 minutes doing, 35 minutes doing. Um, let me come to uh, Karuna Ma'am, if she's back on the screen, please. Um, my first question, ma'am, to you is uh, about Toli Mettu. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Your FLN mission in the state of Telangana. You have taken multiple academic and administrative steps already. Uh, if I could request you to address the top two academic measures that you have prioritized for the state of Telangana, specifically with regard to Toli Mettu. Yeah, so uh, we have launched the FLN mission, uh, which we call the Tolimetu. Tolimetu in Telugu means the first step upwards. 
uh, we did the preparatory period where a lot of uh, training material was prepared. Then we had the cascade model of uh, state resource persons uh, trained, and then the district resource persons trained, and then at the mandal level, which is our equivalent to taluk, trainers trained, and then 50,000 teachers trained and oriented for a different kind of a pedagogy where there is textbooks are used, uh, there is an engagement with the child, what transacts between the teacher and the child uh, would change in a very fundamental manner. So uh, after it started, I'm happy to say that uh, there is a lot of change in uh, the way uh, the tra classroom transaction happens uh, in a classroom. And I'm also happy to share that all our 50,000 teachers, uh, there is a lot of traction from the teachers. In the first uh, account, what we thought was that there would be some resistance because you know we are asking them to change uh, the manner in which teaching happens. Uh, but there is a lot of traction. And uh, this is backed by an online app, uh, which has uh, the baseline survey, which is conducted uh, for all the children. It began with a survey. Now each teacher has an app where the baseline uh, uh, the foundation, I mean, the literacy and numeracy levels of each student uh, has been uh, captured. We are very careful to ensure that we don't look at the needle constantly. We are actually concentrating on the processes uh, that are transacted uh, in the classroom. So we've had about three academic bubbles from the time uh, we started in August. Academic bubble means that there is an intensive concentration on the whole uh, classroom pedagogy and uh, use of textbooks and the teaching learning material is in the front, uh, uh, front line. And uh, in the three academic bubbles, all of us, from the secretary uh, to the director of school education, to all our department officers, to the district collectors, education officers, uh, down the line, cluster level headmasters, all of us are uh, in the classrooms, looking at um, what is happening, having cluster level meetings, discussing you know, how we can improve the learning outcome. So there is, has been a lot of focus on the processes involved uh, because we believe that once we get the process right, then uh, the, uh, and we get what transacts between the teacher and student right, then the whole uh, outcomes uh, would be different. So that is one uh, major academic uh, initiative that we have taken. This is, of course, uh, we have backed it with starting of libraries. Room to Read has given us the copyright for a lot of very colorful books. So we are starting libraries, uh, reading sessions, etc. And the second, uh, uh, the third, uh, second or third important initiative uh, that we've had, apart from the whole online uh, database of children, uh, etc., is the community involvement. We are actually. Uh, engaging uh, very actively. We've begun to engage very actively with the parents and the community because unless the community owns the education, uh, we cannot really move the needle forward. So we have uh, every third Saturday parent-teacher meetings. We have a very strong volunteer movement. We are now beginning to engage with the local bodies, uh, you know, the sarpanchas, et cetera, to start taking interest uh, in the, uh, the whole learning outcomes. Because if a child does not come uh, to school regularly, then there is going to be no learning outcome. Uh, if the school lacks in some basic fundamental infrastructure, then it is not going to happen. If the teacher does not turn up to school, then the learning outcome doesn't happen. So I think that is one very important initiative uh, which uh, uh, we have taken forward. So we have this whole database now of the various learning levels of uh, the children. Uh, of every single child who is uh, in Telangana, we have about 11 lakh children database. But as I said, we are not looking at quantity just now. We are not looking at where the needle has moved. We are actually concentrating on all the processes. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, you initially spoke about an emergency, and in your response, it looks like your <clears throat> preparedness is definitely to respond to that emergency. So thank you for giving those details. I will come back to you. You mentioned two, three very interesting things. Um, one was around your readiness around assessments and this online app and how you've got a lot of data. So I'll come back to you specifically on a question on assessments. Uh, Anshad, sir, I wanted to um, maybe shift it a little bit from academic measures that you are taking as a state not to repeat. But there are also important governance, structural issues, location referred to, 
if you can speak about the governance related structural issues that the state has put in place specifically with regard to i know your work on monitoring field based monitoring which is very critical if you could talk about uh, maybe the top two priorities for the state uh, the key of success of any mission is uh, monitoring in every organization whether it is government or non government organization until and unless you monitor something uh, nothing will happen or outcome will be very poor as madam has discussed uh, during her discussion it is on the same line and uh, but we uh, we, uh, uh, we have adopted some specific measures for to improve the governance uh, on monitoring point uh, we uh, i have two uh, two steps to put before uh, you first is the district level and school level monitoring we have uh, we have systematized the system of monitoring uh, at the school level block level district level then uh, at the state level we have designed a specific framework like uh, weekly assessment has to there to measure the competency uh, mentors visit has to be there how many uh, visits uh, are going uh, on train uh, capacity building of the teachers attendance of the students as well as well as teachers uh, putting all these as objective parameters we have uh, designed one scorecard at the level of block district and ultimately these are uh, uh, at district level these are reviewed by the deputy commissioner uh, uh, by comparing the blocks and at the state level uh, we are uh, throwing challenge to improve the district scorecards and uh, this has uh, given a very good result uh, in terms of uh, uh, learning outcome i want to put uh, one example real real life example <coughs> i have gone to attend one function uh, marriage function in the day time and randomly i went to one school and uh, i spent about 2 hours in the school by uh, by uh, doing a spot assessment through skill passbook we are having a system of uh, uh, tracking uh, through skill passbook means every student has one skill passbook in the classroom what are the com competencies uh, each student has achieved that is that has to be uh, indicated by the teacher just i uh, i compared the, uh, <coughs> the skill passbook Ki which student has uh, uh, what competencies just just i cross checked uh, almost 90% uh, students were up to the mark means that his teachers has uh, filled the skill passbook with 100% accuracy about 100% accuracy that, uh, that is one example and this is uh, the outcome of one uh, what to use uh, governance change means constant monitoring then uh, we have also started one program from the state headquarters that is siksha diksha paryavekshan we have a start uh, we have uh, trained a pool of uh, about uh, 150 officials to visit the school on defined parameters uh, and they have to spend since uh, assembly till completion of the school and it ends with the uh, discussion with the school management committee and the school management committee has uh, member from parents as well as local bodies like panchayat or uh, in case of urban area uh, councillors and we are also collecting during the pre-eviction the mon uh, uh, the team means uh, uh, that team includes from the level of administrative secretary director additional director and other uh, uh, senior officials they uh, score individually uh, including uh, financial progress as well as the academic transaction what M madam was uh, explaining the uh, major major part of that uh, prevention is uh, for academic monitoring means uh, uh, how class transaction is being done and that too based uh, mostly in uh, for the nipun purpose 
we are especially focused on the pedagogy. New pedagogy is being developed and uh, the teachers, they have been trained whether they are e using or not. In, the, in this way, we have covered about, uh, till now, uh, 700 schools. We have real-time data. And just one more example I want to put across. We have started from Mahindragar district. And the average uh, attendance, uh, students' attendance in that district was on that day. 75 percent and in the month of December we for the last academic session we can uh, completed in Karnal district and the student attendance was about 90 percent this is the real data and uh, I think uh, these are the two key uh, governance uh, issues uh, that uh, uh, we have implemented to achieve the objective of the mission thank you that's very interesting and I'm uh, glad you've raised these issues because they are also, I, I know that some states are grappling with such issues and it seems that you have managed to crack them. So I think there's a lot of learning um, for states that are present here, but also when this is recorded and sent to others. Uh, I will come back to you, sir, specifically to talk about um, performance culture with teachers and teacher behaviors because that is a very pertinent issue when you are bringing about systemic change. If mindsets are not going to change, then What's the point of putting a new process in place? So I will come back to you on that. Um, Lokesh sir, specifically with regard to the last two years, and I know your work began even pre-COVID, um, your, your readiness for uh, Mission Ankur was pre-COVID, and then of course COVID hit, and uh, there was a large-scale DG-LEP program that happened where um, the entire program was digitized and sent to homes as opposed to schools because schools were shut down. Um, I want you to focus specifically on the wins that the state may have had in the readiness for Mission Ankur. Uh, you've done a lot of work, interesting work on teacher professional development. Uh, there are greater than 90,000 teachers that you've had to teach and a cascade model as we know doesn't always work when there are multiple cascades but Madhya Pradesh did a very interesting model. If you could speak about maybe one or two wins that you've had in the last uh, year or two. Okay, so as you rightly put, we were the early movers when it came to the development of TLM and the uh, teacher training. So before the session, I was watching the video wherein Haryana was claiming that it was the first state. It was the Madhya Pradesh which first developed the TLM and the teacher training. We started using the uh, newly devised TLM way back in June last year. It was developed a couple of years back. So uh, uh, that apart, so basically the first step, as you rightly mentioned, is to revamp the TLM. It has to be in consonance with the uh, changed pedagogical needs. Uh, when we talk about the old curriculum, the old TLM, the old books, it won't work. So that work started a couple of years back and the organizations, T Education Alliance, the SOLSAC, Room to Read was there with us for the literacy part, SOLSAC for the uh, numeracy part basically. So we developed those, uh, basically we developed the student workbooks, worksheets, uh, and the teacher guides. So a couple of uh, prominent features, if I would call so, in the teacher guide. Earlier we had the concept of lesson plans, but only a fraction of the teachers, maybe at best, at best I would say, the optimum, the best case scenario would be around 10% of teachers would have the lesson plans ready with them the brighter ones or the more meticulous ones, 10%. But when we made these teacher guides, so we ensured that uh, the lesson plans were there right at the beginning for all the uh, lessons in the uh, curriculum. So they had a ready-made lesson plan, so they knew what to do, and it was structured in such a way that not only uh, week-wise, but the day-wise schedule is given. So for instance, what the teacher needs to do in the first 20 minutes of the day, followed by the, the next 30 minutes, then the consecutively the next 20 minutes. So it is uh, structured to that nitty gritty details. And of course, like if somebody might have an apprehension that uh, if somebody is not follow, able to follow this tight schedule. So there are gap weeks in it, like week six, week 12, week 18, week 24, week 30. So those weeks, they serve a couple of purposes. A, for consolidation of the part that has already been covered. 
and in case the teacher has not been able to keep pace with the earlier say the uh, earlier preceding 5 to 6 weeks so he could take that time to revise or to finish on time that was the second thing which helped the teachers because otherwise one would take a few weeks to complete some but something that was supposed to uh, be completed in one week and thereafter the remaining part it would be ignored so basically it is something that i have seen across all levels so whether it was in the school or the university or the uh, civil preparation everywhere the initial few parts they get undue time vis-a-vis -vis the exact time which should which they should get uh, when we look at the entire scheme of things so that structure and the lesson plans that help uh, we have been interacting with the teachers for the last one year as uh, we started using these materials in the uh, last academic session it has been one full academic session that they have used it so the feedback has been very encouraging so rather than this acting as some burden over them they uh, it has greatly facilitated them and they are like now enjoying it so uh, even the kids they are now uh, of course they like the classroom transactions more because it's all in line with the uh, the new pedagogical uh, interventions that we need whether it is toy based pedagogy whether it's centered around the uh, sports based group activities so it's all centered around that it's all in alignment so that is a secondly about the tpd so we had this task cut out to uh, train all the teachers so unlike other smaller states in madhya pradesh we have around 1 lakh odd teachers and at that point of time the uh, ministry of education they had launched the nishta uh, core series which was developed by the ncrt so the nishta 3.0 series was centered on the fln competencies and uh, how to train teachers over that so the stand of ministry was that since we already have FLN uh, uh, Nishta 3.0 for FLN, so there is no need of uh, separate training apart from that. But we were very convinced that this won't work and uh, we wanted an in-person training because we all know practically uh, the online training, the uh, attitude, the mindset is not attuned yet to uh, completely uh, make use of the online trainings so we were sure that we wanted to go for an in-person training and uh, so we had to convince MOE that we want it to be done and so then uh, the MOE agreed to it and all that followed secondly the initial uh, idea was to go uh, for a cascade model wherein the state level group then the district resource group would be uh, developed which would train the actual trainers at the district level and those trained at the district level they will go further down to the blocks and train the teachers but then we thought uh, this this won't work the transmission loss would be uh, quite significant when it comes to this model so then i decided that we should have the uh, teachers the master trainers trained at the state level itself so we called the master trainers to bhopal at the state headquarters itself and the people who actually trained the 90,000 teachers, they were all trained in the state headquarter. So in Bhopal, we trained all those who trained the 90,000 teachers. So there was no transmission loss. And uh, again, we had to uh, spread it over a period of time because we had limited number of uh, master trainers which we could train at the state. So in certain blocks where we did it, if the block size was like significant, so it spread over six weeks, seven weeks, eight weeks, couple of months. But still we ensured that we were convinced this would work. And I'm glad to say that it did work and the response from the teachers, as I said, was extremely encouraging. And so uh, now the TLM is being used effectively because there's no point in developing the TLM, the teacher guides, the workbooks if you don't. Uh, uh, build that capacity for them to use it so when this capacity was built they started training it and then we followed it up with refresher trainings so this week-long training which it, this was done right at the beginning of the academic year thereafter somewhere around the mid of the academic year we had the refresher trainings again that again for five days wherein the initial uh, concepts were reinforced and the feedback from them 
was used uh, so that we could go for mid course corrections and that we will be using for revamping the curriculum uh, the teaching learning material this year which we would be using from the next academic year which is 24 25 so that's how uh, it has worked and uh, i don't have an hesitation in saying that i think these two are the big wins which madhya pradesh has thank you sir and and thank you for starting us off with the healthy competition between Haryana. I'm glad you... It, it's nice to see states competing healthily. So thank you for pointing that out. Um, I do want to come back to you specifically around, and I don't think this is an issue for Madhya Pradesh. Uh, I think it's an issue for the country as a whole as far as teacher availability is concerned. We've had to, I think, in a lot of states, resort to multi-grade, multi-level teaching <clears throat> because there are only one teacher schools because there are only two teacher schools and therefore grades one, two, three have to be divided for one teacher and the remainder school for another teacher. So, so I'll specifically come back to you with the assumption that this is an issue in every state and uh, how might you want to address that. Sort of, you know, you're working in 12 states uh, as an organization that I, I believe has the technical expertise and you've also worked globally. Um, I would love to get your thoughts on how does Room to Read or how do you as an organization, define the success for the Nippon mission? I think, uh, well, reflecting back, uh, Room to Read started operations in 2003 and 2005 is when Nasser came out. And so if I reflect back those days, uh, it was all about creating salience around the importance of foundation literacy. I think people were not even there to understand why is it so important and why is it not K-12 and why should we focus on foundational grades. So as I think from there to a situation where today we, the NEP talks about foundation literacy being the cornerstone of any learning that happens in future years, I think that's a huge uh, progress that has happened. Um, I think, and then following NEP, I think the NEP of course very uh, well articulated the importance of foundation literacy. And then I think the Nippon document almost, so if NEP is the why of foundation literacy, the Nippon kind of lays down very clearly the what's of it. It talks about a comprehensive approach, it talks about the various things that governments need to work on in order to address the problem. So it's a, it basically advocates for a very comprehensive approach, which is again, uh, I think a very uh, good way forward. So the the why and the what are kind of resolved. I think the challenge now is the how. And the how is the most difficult part because there's no uniform how. Every state will have to develop their house. And that, that would depend because the state context vary, the languages vary, the, the challenges the states have vary. So what we're seeing now is basically states trying to get their act together to solve the how of foundation literacy. And I think many states have done uh, good work in that. You mentioned in the beginning, there are certain states who have gone ahead, done a uh, mission kind of an approach where, whether it's Mission Ankur or Prena or Haryana or Assam, many of the states, where they're taking a very holistic approach of uh, looking at foundation literacy. There are other states who are looking at uh, component by component. So maybe they would, they would f there are certain states who are trying to address the ECC continuum first, or some states who are uh, trying to address the you know, school readiness aspect or other curricular areas. But I think these are all uh, very important and very important steps that uh, that states are taking. Um, COVID, of course, you mentioned COVID, and COVID has been a big dampener because, you know, as states started working on foundational literacy, you have two years of no schooling, and then you have a situation where a large number of children in, in grade three, four, five do not have foundation skills. So even while the state would want to focus on foundation grades, they cannot be in a situation where they say that, okay, I mean, whoever has not learned has not learned. They will have to kind of address those children also who are now in grades four, five, and three, four, five, and do not have the foundation skills. So I think that has put the clock behind uh, for all states, I think. But I think states are coping up. They're trying to find solutions. There are remedial programs they're thinking of, which are all very good thing. And finally, I think the, the larger uh, emphasis that you have NAS now, which talked about grade three. You have a foundation FLS study specifically done on foundation grades. The Institute of Institute for Competitiveness report talks about foundation learning. So I think there's a there's a 
big salience this, this, the, the country is looking at uh, what states are doing. I think states will have to kind of start delivering against this, which I think is a good way forward. Great. Thanks, Saurav. And I'll come back to you specifically on, you spoke about this compliance fidelity. How do we move from compliance fidelity to implementation fidelity? It's not about checking boxes, but it's about ensuring that the work is happening on the ground. So just your thoughts on that. Um, I'm assuming we have 10 more minutes. The organizers can tell me otherwise, is that correct? Five minutes? Okay, sir, which means we have one minute to respond. Uh, Karuna, ma'am, if I can come back to you on the question I had uh, requested as a follow-up around uh, assessment reliability. Um, how, what is the state doing with regard to collecting data, ensuring that it is reliable, um, and then how are you using this data to inform, you, you spoke about processes and progress and improving, not focusing necessarily on the output, but on the process of delivery. If you can talk about what you've done with regard to assessments, data collection, mm -hmm. and the reliability around that. And one minute, yeah. please, thank you. Uh, yes, just one quick word about uh, the FLN, uh, which the, uh, the first round of questions answered. I think uh, one important, because you asked me about the important thing, one very important uh, aspect of the whole FLN and the needle moving forward, I believe, is uh, setting up a right kind of an ecosystem. We're going to have an inspector Raj where we are going to look month to month, you know, how the teacher is performing, whether the student has moved forward. I think we'll all end up with a numbers game, which we all don't want. I think the key words which we are using in Telangana is about empathy, compassion, support, and all these words. Uh, at the state level, at the district level, and within a school where joyful learning happens in a very easy manner. And to make this process not so complex, but make it very, very simple, where the syllabus is uh, behind, uh, but the learning outcomes is in the front. So that's what we plan to do, make it a simple straight line. So coming to the data, what we have done is, one, we did a CSF uh, uh, has done a survey uh, of the uh, learning levels and uh, teacher learning, uh, teacher uh, uh, teaching methodology and uh, looking at the capacity of teachers. But with what we have now done is uh, have a baseline. We have developed a simple app which ha which is available in each te teacher's smartphone, where the learning levels of each child is captured. And uh, whenever somebody goes to a classroom, we are also looking at spot assessments, which will be able to triangulate and validate, uh, you know, the data which is already captured. Then we also look at the teaching uh, methodology. There are spot uh, assessments, so it is no longer. Uh, a uh, random survey or survey of any kind. We have 100% uh, census, which translates into dashboards, which the collectors and uh, I think mainstreaming this whole agenda is important, which the collectors and additional collectors and all of us are able to see at uh, various levels. As I said, we are not looking at moving of the needle. We are looking at just, and then also very importantly, uh, my Madhya Pradesh colleague has I mean, it's a marvelous thing what you are doing in terms of the teacher capacity, et cetera. We've actually rolled out a need assessment of the teachers because we think that teacher professional development is important and nothing more like what the teacher feels uh, he or she is lacking. So need assessment uh, survey is rolled out in the same app. So from time to time, we capture, uh, you know, uh, what is happening uh, from the teacher side, from the student side, from the parent side. So. I think that's how we move forward. And I said, if you want to have reliable data, then I think that your focus should not be on the data. It should be on the processes. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I think you, you touched upon a very important point about understanding teacher competencies and, and the needs of teachers. If, if you recognize that, I think teachers will take their training and their capacity building more seriously. So I'm glad you're doing that and tailoring their requirements. Anshad sir specifically had asked you about teacher behaviors. If we can just understand from you, is the state of Haryana doing spe something specific to change the culture? Teachers historically have been sent for administrative responsibilities, election, COVID, yay duty, woe duty. What are you doing to change that culture for teachers? Uh, the basic message from our side at every forum or every interaction with the teacher, even during the teacher, is that you can do it and you, you are uh, having a very important role to play for uh, the development of society, for the development of a state. And the model which MP has adopted, same model Haryana has adopted, that person-to-person -person training, not through online mode, and with open discussion. 
what uh, we have extra done that uh, we were uh, uh, there in the every, uh, almost every training session we were uh, encouraging the all the teachers that uh, it can be done your you have to change the method for the betterment of the uh, children and uh, since time is very short just i wanted to uh, check our facebook page and twitter handle nipun haryana and you can see the change in the behavior it is not just for uh, videography purpose the all the videos which are there on our social media platform that is the real classroom transaction and the use of tlm and the excitement on the face of children which you can assess only the pro, uh, videography has been done by professional uh, photographer uh, grapher, but te teachers and students are real thank you sir <clears throat> I'm getting very dirty looks from the organizers. So Lokesh sir, uh, quickly on teacher availability, because this is a big issue. And like I said, not MP, but specifically, how can we solve this problem of teacher availability? So uh, availability of teachers and student attendance, these obviously are the two prerequisites for any kind of program to be successful. Uh, the obvious solution uh, and the straightforward solution would be to have a large scale recruitment. So in Madhya Pradesh, this particular year, we have recruited 16,000. 16,000 primary teachers we have recruited this year. And uh, then the remaining, t the existing teachers, the point is to prioritize the FLN grades. So the hitherto practice is that uh, the primary school is there, so the class four and five. So the best teacher would be allotted to class four and five. And the overall in the scheme of things, the priority if it's a K2, K-12 school, so it will be uh, students of grade 9, 10 for the 10th boards, 11, 12 for the 12th boards. So likewise, we are now uh, instilling a sense of uh, urgency uh, uh, to the teachers and to the HMs that the grade 1 and 2 teacher should be a dedicated FLN teacher. So whosoever we are training uh, or retraining in all these years, so he shouldn't be changed. He shouldn't move to another grade. So he should continue to engage with the FLN grades so that the capacity building is of use. Otherwise, uh, we often used to see that uh, somebody goes for training and then in the next round, somebody else substitutes him. So that the longitudinal continuity, that continuum has to be maintained. So dedicated FLN uh, teachers, the large scale recruitment, rationalizing it so that it's like equitably spaced between the higher grades and one and two. So one and two now are no longer the ignored grades. That's it. Thank you, sir. Saurav, I just want to flip your question. We've seen DPEP, we've seen Sarva Shiksha Abhyan, Rashtra Madhmik Shiksha Abhyan. How is Nippun going to be different and will the intervention stick? Yeah, that's a million dollars question, actually. <laughs> um, I think a couple of things. One is, uh, you know, any change would be a function of both a good design and a good effective implementation. So it cannot be either or. Uh, while Nippon till now has largely resolved the design issues, you have good teaching materials, you have good training content. What is still challenging is the implementation part of it. And a couple of uh, examples I will highlight. One is, of course, the provisioning, just having teachers, adequate number of teachers. If you have a single teacher school, there's no way that any good learning is going to happen because you'll always have a very highly multigrade situation. Similarly, having, not having dedicated FLN teachers is always going to impact. Not having adequate provisioning of materials, maths, manipulatives, uh, reading books, is always going to affect your learning outcomes. The fourth thing is even when you have the provisioning there, reaching them on time. Many times we have seen textbooks reaching in December. I mean, how do you even expect anything to happen after that? So I think those are key administrative governance issues that need to be resolved. On the pedagogic side, I think the, the biggest challenge is the, the use of assessments to actually, uh, you know, uh, do classroom remediation. So, you have a lot of assessment happening, but is the teacher using those assessment results to provide support to the children? And is your academic monitoring system, and again, a lot of states have still have very weak academic monitoring system, be able to kind of address that? I mean, like a couple of thumb rule uh, indicators that I usually find, uh, 
you try to look out for. Like you go to any school in a very remote area, you ask the teacher who are the children in your classroom who do not, who are not learning properly. Ten years back, we were ch teachers would not even be able to say that. Now with a lot of assessments happening, I think children teachers are able to say who are the children who are not learning. But the next question is how would they learn or why are they not learning? And I find a lot of the teachers still are not being able to answer why a child is not learning. And that's a combination of their knowledge, their practice, their attitude, everything. But I think unless we can make those classroom practices change, things will not stick because nothing is, I mean, you have to change the habit intrinsically. Sort of thanks. It's uh, nice to end on a high. So there is hope. Is, the, is what I made of that. Uh, I, will not I will not take questions because you can see the pressure I'm facing. Um, but I would like to, and nor will I summarize, but let me please join me in thanking Karuna Ma'am, Anshad Sir, Lokesh Sir, and Saurabh. Thank you.